Hi and welcome to the channel. In this video I show you how I fit the hinges to the tailplane. So let's see how we get on. Looking at all the hinges, uh, we've got three hinges on the elevators, uh, two three inch ones uh, fitted outboard, six inch one fitted in the middle, and then we have three hinges fitted to the rudder, one at the bottom, one very close to the top, and one near the sort of centre position on the hinge line, as you'd normally expect. Uh, some aircraft it could be slightly different positioning. Uh, again, you know, looking at uh, the uh, Minimax uh, that uh, uh, Dennis is building, uh, the upper hinge isn't right at the very top of the vertical stabiliser, which is uh, unusual, I would say. Um, but that's how, how they've come across and, and decided to do the job. Uh, the next stage is going to be marking these positions out on the actual control surfaces and uh, then the height of them to allow for the offset of the pin. So as the pin is offset to one side we need to offset this cut here for that to, to, so that the pin is on the centre line. So I'll make a slight adjustment for that. Marked out the hinge positions, quarter inch in from the end of this block here is where the end of the hinge will go. It's three inches long so I've marked that and then half an inch in from each end I've uh, put a mark. They'll be carried up uh, and intersect with the mark that's going to go to the back of that, three eighths of an inch back to put the centre line for this area. This one will be uh, very slightly f uh, further out than 3 8 it'll be half inch still within the meat of the uh, hinge and that's to allow for the stay to go up to the fin. Uh, here I've uh, worked out a section going around here in line with the hinge uh, where it'll be drilled with a 3 16 hole and that takes the other stay. It's not shown on the plan exactly where that hole should be or where that hole should be. But looking at it, you can sort of make up a, a fair assumption. Uh, they actually have it on the drawing sort of out here where it wouldn't actually bite into the rudder, uh, sorry, into the hinge at all. Um, which seems a bit mad because that means you'd have to have yet another hole and yet they don't show that. So. Uh, I'm making the, uh, the calculation. I can go uh, back into the uh, hinge itself and still have enough land. That'll be safe and it does two jobs in one. Saves the weight of a bolt, if nothing else, if I've got that bit wrong. Or, uh, you know, is the correct position. It's, it, as I said, not shown on the plan very well. In the centre here, uh, so sort of similar sort of issues. All these are going to be uh, 832. Uh, type uh, bolts going through and bolts uh, we've got a six inch hinge so we've got one two th three, three of those but this point here we've got the uh, elevator horn which should be three inches out from the center line so exactly on the end of the, the, the sort of hinge and it's got an L section it doesn't show very clearly on the plan which way that L section goes it sort of eludes, depending on which drawing and, and, and view you look at, that it actually goes to the inboard side. In which case, I will use the forward box, two bolts holding that in position uh, on the elevator itself. I'll use the forward bolt hole of that to hold the hinge. Uh, so I'm not going to drill that yet because I haven't got the material uh, at hand or made up the elevator horn so I'll actually drill that hole later. Uh, as you can see this is all blocked out <coughs> with a little quarter inch uh, 
would uh, so, uh, set up the quarter inch gap as stated on the plan. So next step for me is I'm going to take these clamps off, measure back the, uh, the 3 8 or half inch for this one, um, mark so we know where the holes go and then I'm going to measure up and set up the height which uh, you'll see in a bit. So that's drawn the length of the, uh, the hinges. I'm just going to draw a center line as a marker so I can actually use that. So I'm just using my little center line uh, gauge. So there we have uh, the extreme, there's the centre line, that is where the uh, centre of the hinge should end up. So if we've got a look at it in close we'll have the pin lined up with that and uh, we'll have our slot below that and I'm just going to do the calculation on what the, what the width is of this, half it, and that will tell me what the offset is to for the lower line for cutting and then the upset for that so I can cut the second bit of the slot so this will sl slot in. Remember I'm, I'm really after the, uh, the hinge being a tight fit uh, you know, requiring a bit of force to push it in now, I don't want it slack, but then I don't want it so tight that I'm actually having to sort of like almost batter it in. If you're having to push really, really hard to get it in, you're putting a lot of force on the wood to split the wood, and that's something we don't want to have force already there, uh, which will put stress outside the hinge line uh, for when we're actually flying, because that will induce a, a cracking. Uh, if anything at all, we're slightly better off having the gap very slightly too big and have the clamping force uh, of the bolts actually pulling the wood down onto it, uh, less chance of having uh, a split cr uh, crack going along the, the grain uh, span wise. Hopefully this setup sort of shows what I've got, I've got a piece of Paxil in here, uh, it just so happens that it's uh, perfectly set. I needed the, the uh, hinge to be offset from the centre line, uh, 3 32nd, 2.4 millimetres uh, uh, offset and uh, with this piece of Paxley it's uh, set just perfectly for the lower cut. Uh, I'm using just this uh, sort of reciprocating uh, type source of what I've used before. Uh, quite, a, quite a narrow blade on it. Um, not the fastest cutting blades but these work quite well. Uh, just to just to go in now then the thing I do need to do before I get really started is I put a, a paint mark on the blade uh, so I know how deep I want to cut so I want to cut no deeper than that so I've got something to see uh, you could use tape for doing the same thing and or it, just cut in and by keeping the blade flat on the uh, Paxlin means I'm going to drive in nice and straight and then to get the second cut up I'm actually going to shim this Paxlin up using a thin piece of card so a bit of time lapse
Now to clean out uh, this, this slot, I've, I've just got an old hacksaw blade. I've, I've cut a sort of uh, a hook on the end. Uh, it's a bit like what we used to call a skin knife. That's slightly offset. That hook is slightly bent. So that allows me to force in and drag out any any nasties. If you get trapped up in the corner there. So all the hinges are now fitted there. If we get it straight, they're just a firm fit, they're not they're not super tight. Uh, there we go, that's that's how that's how tight they are. So I've got to keep the hinges in this orientation. So when I cut the slots in the elevator, to make sure I've got the top and the top are uh, kept corresponding, although I could swap them around at this moment in time. So I'm going to pilot drill the tailplane, well all the hinge uh, bolt holes and that, with a, uh, a brad style drill bit, four millimeters, and then from there I can uh, put the hinges in and put a marker down with a standard four millimeter drill, and then everything can be enlarged to the correct sizes. So, we'll see how we get on with this. Holes pilot drilled, 4mm with the brad bit. It makes a nice clean cut in the wood. And now I'm just going to use a standard 4mm drill bit in a hand drill. Because all I'm after doing is creating a mark. I've put the gap pieces in and clamped it, checked everything's lined up including the centre line and this is just going to allow me to, to uh, put a, uh, a mark on each of the hinges ready to go for enlarging to their final sizes. which is uh, 4.2 millimetre for the uh, 8 slash 32s and uh, 4.8 millimetres for the 3 16th AN3s. So the central hinge at the front, that hole there is the pilot hole for the tailplane horizontal stabiliser mounting bolt and that's got to be drilled out yet to 4.8 millimetres which would leave not much land. So I'm going to drill that out to 4.8 and then I'm going to just enlarge things around here so it, uh, it sort of skips around rather than actually putting it into uh, this place. There won't be any meat there. So I'll take that out so this, this hinge will fit around that bolt on the grounds the flange dimension here is greater than that from the fissure. So now uh, all the holes in the wood have been drilled out to their finished size and all the hinges have had their uh, pilot holes uh, drilled through uh, undersized so now it's just a case of uh, me taking the drill here, feeling it down onto the metal and I have a chuck tight Getting it down to the metal and I can just, just finish drill the metal. Stick the screw in which is going to be slightly tight. There is a little bit of excess metal on the back face there. So if I can show you, just there, that little piece of metal there uh, will be uh, removed 
and then I'll round the corners of the hinges. Okay, corners rounded on the uh, hinges and deburred. Uh, that section removed where it was protruding through the back rear spar, also through the, the, the spar on uh, the elevator. Uh, these are now over a gram lighter than uh, the full hinge that we started with. Uh, so every little bit counts. Uh, I just think it looks a lot neater having the rounded corners and they're not doing us any good so they might you know having them sharp it's not doing us any good so we might as well remove them okay let's uh, get this lot together i think uh, my next uh, thing to do is uh, i'm going to just put the bolts in or screws in to see uh, how we do for movement i've got a feeling i'll only need to take off a very small amount or a relatively small radius off the uh, edge of the stabilizer and elevator not the huge great chunk it sort of shows on the uh, drawing on the plan so I'm just going to round these edges so that the covering hasn't got a really sharp corner to go around I'll double check though that I've got the movement so I'll do that in a moment okay so that's uh, that's the horizontal stabiliser rounded and the elevator rounded. I'm going to call it uh, enough for enough today. It's hot and humid. Uh, not sure what will be in the next video. We might look at uh, the rudder, fin and rudder. Uh, that should be finished. I might not bother videoing that too much as it's very much the same procedures I've already carried out. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.